Okay, theoretically the stream should be running. Dum 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 dum. Okay, let's get all these posts out. Okay. <laughs> Skype. I should probably close Skype for now. Okay, so we got no one in the stream right now. Um, but that'll soon change. So uh, you guys might have noticed something slightly different about the stream. Uh, and this is something I like to do occasionally. <laughs> um, I actually do uh, Photoshop a little bit. Hey, so I've already in the stream. Awesome. Um, yeah, I do a little bit of Photoshop. So I decided I'd try out, you know, some of the fancy things that happen. And I know um, I tried to make it so like the stuff isn't blocking any of the stuff. So, you know, it's like in this corner, it used to have the mannequin logo there. But I moved it over here because, you know, first of all, I realized that that was sitting on like the mute and solo, uh, which I use quite a bit. Uh, hey, Gail, welcome. Uh, your earliest stream. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> It's a lot of people that whenever they hop in, like halfway through, they're like, man, am I ever going to make it like on time? So yeah, this is actually a regular stream at a regular time. And I apologize about uh, the fact that it has not been at the regular time for the past couple of weeks. And next week, I might have to cancel it because it's a break week for me. Uh, but my dad said, oh, yeah, so we have a fence that needs to get torn down and replaced at our house. So I'm like... Great. I guess I'm consigned to doing that now. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. But anyway, I tried to keep the new stuff so it doesn't cover too much up. So, I mean, like, when we go dig through samples, it does cover this up a bit. Otherwise, it shouldn't cover that much more than it used to before. And um, up here, you'll notice there's a nice little overlay, which is kind of funny. Um, it's the only reason it has, like, this random garbage going on right now was because uh, I wanted to test out to make sure I knew how to make it work. Uh, but eventually, we're going to be putting more stuff there. Uh, as you can tell, like, above the, the feed now, there's um, uh, Mastering 5 Bucks a Song. I'm going to uh, pick that up. Uh, for now, if you actually are interested, like, immediately, uh, just let me know. Otherwise, um, what I'll be doing is I'll be uh, – I have a account on Fiverr, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a Mastering Service there. Then I'll link it in the uh, streams from now on. So there's going to be that, and then I might open stream tip as well in case anyone wants to donate during the streams But because apparently that's a popular thing. But I doubt much will happen in that regard, so I'm not too inclined to set it up really quick. So, yeah. Hey, Wasabi House, welcome to the stream. Yeah. <laughs> Gaming layout, exactly. Yeah, so um, I designed this myself. It was, it was kind of fun. Okay, so uh, first things first, obviously. Whenever we hop back in, let's play through the project, take a listen to what we had last time, um, and then we'll go through and start working on some stuff. Uh, have I, oh shoot, I forgot to buy cowbell insurance. Um, let me go do that. I'll do that while we play this back. <laughs> I think I'm kind of starting to like this track, <laughs> which is a rarity. Usually I liked the, the tracks less and less as I listen to them more. Um, but 
I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm just getting used to the the quirks of it. So uh, one of the things I want to do is actually I want to kind of focus on some, something mix based first. Um, and let's see if I could find it. Would be here, I believe. Is it this one? No, that's um, I think it's this one then. So there's this one synth that's a little too far back. Yeah, this one. Okay. Um, does the vocal chop sound a little weird? Uh, I haven't changed anything in between. So if it sounds weird, it's just because it sounded weird last time we didn't finish going through everything. So uh, the thing about this one is it's very warm, which is kind of nice. But at the same time, um, I'm noticing that it it blends in too much. It just kind of sound, starts to sound like um, uh, a blend, as I, as I always mention. And the reason is because it's so stinking close to the um, the pad. It's in the it's a, almost exactly in the same spot as the pad. So you kind of hear like the the parts that really stand out for this particular synthesizer is just in like the resonant point of this pad here. Like uh, if we look at the EQ that I've done like right there, that 1K is kind of where the resonant point of this sound is. So we're not going to replace the sound. Uh, what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to pull everything off of this. What's the compressor doing? Is it just, is it actually compressing? Wow. I might want to reduce how much that compressor is doing. Uh, I like the chorus. So we're going to take off all the EQ and the overdrive right now. Oh, it's probably because I had the overdrive on. Okay. So that sounds bad as it is. What we're going to do is we're going to drop that there for now, and then we'll listen in the mix and figure out how to get it to fit. So, um, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, it might be your speakers. You were using your phone speakers before, and now you're, using, you're at your computer with headphones. Uh, yeah, it always has sounded weird. Um, so, um, maybe you're just now actually hearing all of it. <laughs> so it sounds closer, but I think there's like something around uh, almost 6K. Nope, a little bit lower. Um, yeah.
Okay, so I think that kind of fits, but the reason I'm stopping right now is because what I want to do is once again, as we do rather often, uh, I need to pull back here and listen to the grand scheme of things. When it comes in, does it fit? So. Okay, so one of the things that's kind of confusing me is, let me look at this. It sounds like the notes are of different velocity. So it could be the fact that there is an LFO on here that is like messing with a filter or something. Uh, okay, so envelope, envelope, random is the phase. Okay, bipolar random, velocity, easy, easy, filter one. LFO2, voice pitch, no. Okay, so... There's still that one frequency in here I've used. Oh, nope, I haven't used all my bands. Okay, I, there's a specific frequency in here that's been bugging me. Right there. Okay, now I'm going to do one final thing to this. I am going to grab a Tokyo Don TDR Labs. Here we go. Proximity. I use this a lot now. Um, what we're going to do is turn off the stereo width. I think that's because that pushes it farther back, which is it's supposed to kind of sound like a background sound, kind of. Uh, but at the same time, I want it to be loud enough. And at the same time, um, you can't just turn it down the way it is right now. Because like uh, I've talked about this before, but the the tone of something changes as it goes farther and farther away. Um, it starts to be a lot more hi-fi. So you get mostly high end, not so much presence. And then you get a bit of low end as you push it back. So, uh, okay. Hey, you're back after a long time. Um, sorry that I haven't been reading chat. I'll pop to that now. Um, 
Oh yeah, I found out the alchemy costed like 250 bucks at some point. Yes, it also looked drastically different. Here, let me pull up um, Camel Audio L Alchemy. Here we go. For those of you that don't know, Alchemy used to be owned by Camel Audio. Then Apple bought out Camel Audio. Now this is kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing. Kind of a good thing because then we get things like Alchemy for free. Kind of a bad thing because now we can't get Camel Fat right now unless Apple decides to re-release it under Logic, uh, which they may do. But I mean, I'm not hearing any information as to when they're going to do that or if they're going to do that. So I don't know. But this is what Alchemy used to look like. <laughs> and as you can tell, it is quite different now. Um, it does not look like... Actually, you know what? Um... You can see some slight similarities between this other image. Let me pull this up. Um, this other image here, you can see that there's some similarities here. You have these, you have this, and it's all kind of like same general idea for the preset browser. Um, but then, you know, once again, we go back to this one. And you can kind of see over here is the same section. And then you have modulation sources. But then it's like, it kind of feels like there's a lot of other stuff missing that is in there now. It might just be because this has it on different tabs. But um, yeah, it changed a lot um, when Apple got a hold of it. So yeah, that's Alchemy um, and where it kind of came from. So it is like Alchemy is a great synthesizer, not because Apple made it and it's in Logic, but because someone else made it, it was known for being a pretty good synthesizer. And then Apple bought them out and then added it in. So that's why, that's one of the reasons that you could actually... Um, the alchemy is almost a external plugin. Um, like it, it's, it's not like a built in DAW plugin to some regard, to some regard, because as I said, someone else made it. Apple didn't make it and just throw it in their DAW. They bought it off someone. So it'd be like if they bought, you know, serum and, uh, and then they just put it in their DAW. So that's, it's actually a very good, um, synthesizer from what I've heard, but, uh, very good for its purpose. Once again, every synthesizer has its own purpose. You have to figure that out and then use it for its purpose. If you use it outside the purpose, It'll always be bad. So, okay, yeah. Any tips for getting started with GarageBand? I'm taking Elective and they use GarageBand. Um, if you know Logic, you'll pretty much know GarageBand. Now, I don't have GarageBand because I have a Hackintosh, so that means that it doesn't come with GarageBand. I'd actually have to buy it, uh, but I have no reason to buy GarageBand because <laughs> I have Logic. But it's very similar. Um, I believe instead of having your channel strip over here, you, like you have uh, this, you have this kind of layout right here. And then um, basically your, uh, whoops, your inspector here is going to be on the right side. And you're going to have a lot less slots, slots for, slots for, <laughs> so bad. Um, slots for plugins and it's going to be on the right hand side. It's going to look a lot bulkier um, and it doesn't expand. So you like, you cannot have these many plugins on the right hand side. Otherwise they're pretty darn similar. It's just like, um, like advanced things up here. Like you won't see this. You'll just see like the default. Uh, I don't know what the default is. It's probably like, that's, that's what you'll see in, um, in GarageBand, for example. And you can't really like customize it to my knowledge. I, it's been a while since I've used it. Um, so yeah, it's like, if you know logic, if you've been watching some of my stuff, it should be pretty similar and you should be able to pick it up rather quickly. You'll just be like, oh man, I can't do that. Uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's some of the features are pulled out. So, uh, okay. Yeah. You can't do much with GarageBand. Like you can't do bus sends and stuff, uh, which is pretty painful in some cases. Uh, so that means like whenever you have a reverb, it has to take up one slot and you have to have a reverb for, no, wait, no, it does actually have a send for a reverb and a delay, but that's like, it's kind of like permanent. You can't swap it out for a different kind of send. So yeah. Uh, oh, they have a pretty nice studio. Maybe you could bring a laptop with FL, but you still want to get a no garage band in case you can't bring FL and you, so you at least know something. Yeah. Um, to be honest, in my experience, GarageBand is the most user-friendly DAW um, because you hop in and everything you need is right there. Everything you don't need is a little bit off to the side and everything that would be more advanced is pretty much gone. Um, like the one thing that took me a while to figure out was automation in GarageBand because uh, I don't, 
I think there is. I don't remember if there's a what the button for it looks like. I don't know. Let's look at this. Um, da -da -da -da. So I don't remember if they have the button in the same spot. So um, for those of you that are wondering, this is GarageBand, and as as I said, it's very similar to Logic. You have the library over here. These are your individual tracks, and then on the right hand side, you'll have um, the various you know. Uh, plugins that you could put on. Uh, this is just a drummer, so that's kind of useless. But uh, yeah, no, it does have the automation and flex time buttons there. So to access automation, two kind of subtle buttons there. Um, you have this one, and then you have flex time here, which is, uh, you can't really see it doing anything right now. But um, yeah, so there's the automation there. Uh, so if you're, if you're new to FL, that's one thing you're gonna have to get used to. Each track, uh, for a synthesizer has automation on it. So you need to like add things like this um, and then, you know, go through, f choose the particular control you want to do. FL, you actually create um, your own like channels, I guess, for automation. Uh, so it's kind of like, they're kind of separate, but uh, GarageBand and Logic is different. So yeah. Yeah, FL FL's pretty good. It's, uh, it's... To be honest, I think FL uh, was easier than Logic back w when Logic was in version 9. However, with version 10 of Logic, um, I kind of feel that they like, they made the design a lot more user-friendly to make it so that people using GarageBand would be more inclined to upgrade, uh, which was a very good idea, and that's what they did with Final Cut Pro, uh, Final Cut Pro as well. They made it like an, a more advanced version of iMovie, but the problem with Final Cut was when they did that, they got rid of a lot of features. Fortunately, when they did that with Logic, they made the user interface a lot more user-friendly, but they didn't get rid of features, which was the best thing about the whole upgrade. So, yep. Um, okay, how do you contact me for my mastering? Uh, right now, you could just send me a message through uh, YouTube or SoundCloud. Uh, talk to me about it, and I'll get back to you. Uh, although, what I will have, I'll probably have time to set it up later today. What I'm going to do is I have a Fiverr page right now, and then uh, you'll just be able to link to that, and then there will be instructions for the entire thing. You just go through, um, you know, pay, uh, pay the five bucks, upload your sound, and then I'll get back to you with the mastered version. So, um, but I haven't set that up yet. Like, I have the account, and I actually set up one for mixing, but then I kind of was like, uh, I don't know. Um, so I, I, I have, like... A, I don't know, what, what do you call it? A gig for mixing, but it's not like visible yet. So I'm going to do the same for mastering and that'll be visible. And it'd be really, it'll be a really easy process to go through for you guys. Uh, but right now, yeah, if you want to do mastering and you need to track master now and you can't wait for like, uh, I don't know, two or three days, then, um, then you can get in contact with me and I can have it mastered like, you know, in the next 24 hours probably. So um, yeah, that's, that's an option as well. Um, <laughs> FL is for beginners, but still many producers use it. Uh, not really true. Uh, FL can be set as for beginners, but it's still a powerful DAW. Um, you know, I personally, I don't like some of the plugins, um, that come with it, but it has the capability to extend. So, uh, like they have, they have paid plugins that are better. Um, like if you get signature or the, or the complete edition then you get some of the better stuff um but o overall it's a very solid daw uh but once you replace a lot of those plugins like if you get a waves plugin bundle and then uh silent serum synth master and spire all of them start with s keep that in mind very important if it's, if the synth doesn't start with s it's usually a rip off <laughs> um but yeah if you got all those then fl studio would just be like it'd be you know it'd toast every other daw um so that's just, yeah. So like a lot of people say, oh, FL isn't really pro. I disagree. I mean, there are people making music that I really like in it. Like freaking, um, I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head because I don't care to look at what DAWs were or what software people used to make what song. So uh, I don't care that much. So uh, off the top of my head doesn't remember. I don't remember all that much. But yeah, if a lot of people can make great music with it, then there's no reason to say it's not a professional tool. So um, it is it is easier for some people to get started in it. Uh, but at the same time, it's harder for other people. Like, 
I got started in it pretty easy, but I could never get past a certain barrier that I felt was there in FL. Uh, that's why I always produce in Logic. So, um, okay. Um, yes, I can, um, yeah. Uh, Drelude, I could send you the Fiverr link as soon as I get that up. So I will, uh, I'll open a tab with your name in it and I'll send that to you when I get that up. Whoops. Ha ha, it automatically start playing the thing on your front of your page. Um, okay. How much do you think you've spent on plugins or would have spent? Good question. We could go through and tally that up right now. Um, just because we're on a roll with questions, so might as well do that. Uh, okay, so um, logic. Okay, so actually, we'll just open up a notepad here. Uh, no, text edit. Thank you. Uh, da -da. Okay, so logic, logic is two hundred. Um, let's see. Then we have. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, volume shaper four, I think was uh, 40 bucks, but I was lucky enough to get it for uh, like 15. So I'll just say volume shaper, we'll say that's 40 because that's the normal price of it. Uh, da, 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 da. Then, uh, okay, camel crusher was free, sausage fattener was 30. And uh, Kush Audio, those were like 30 each. So um, Sausage Fat, 30. Um, Kush, 60 for the two of those. Okay. I'll try to go this. Uh, could go a little bit faster on this. And Synth Master is like 60 bucks. Um, stereo maker, we'll just say 20 on that one. Uh, and I think that's it. Oh, okay. And then those. So what do we say? Stereo maker, maker is 20. And I already forgot the other two. Okay. So it was waves and Sith master. Okay. Um, waves, those would probably end up netting you, uh, 60 bucks. Uh, but that is kind of on sale. Cause I don't like to put the price of wave stuff on full price because it's like, it go on sale really often. And also it's like, please don't buy at full price. It's a complete ripoff. Um, and then master we'll say was uh, 65. Okay. And then like I have three others which are just synths so that's going to be silent which is what 160 or something 60 serum which is uh, 190 i think and massive which we'll say is 150 i don't remember if it's 150 or 200 so that ends up being uh two three four five fifty uh, six, seven, eight. it's always almost a thousand dollars. I mean, you could do the math there if you care, just like take a screenshot, do the math. But, um, okay, here we go. That's, that's an even better question there. That's actually, I wouldn't say that's a better question. That's a great follow-up question, Joey. Um, okay. So now out of those, which do you deem more essential? Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, we could pull out the Kush ones. The Kush ones are something that I like because I like saturation. Um, so these are, they're basically preamp modelers kind of, um, and they're supposed to give you more like an analog feel. So you could definitely pull those out. Uh, the waves one, I propose to you that only one of them is really worth it. And it is a great tool. So I'm kind of going to leave that on for now. Uh, 30 synth master. I always suggest this one just because it's so cheap. Like look at, look, 160, 190, 150, 65. And the fact that, um, like synth master is it can do some of the stuff that serum can do it could do a lot of the stuff that massive can do and it could do um don't autocorrect this time um and it could do 
more than Silith could do. Uh, it just has a slightly different tone from Silith. So, um, so that's why Synthmaster has to stay on here. Massive, uh, I'd say pull this off. Just because between Silent and Serum, I don't think you really need Massive. Um, and what I would propose to you is instead of Silent, get Spire if you really want it. Uh, just because Silent is kind of starting to go out of style. People are going for Spire instead. Um, and Silent is kind of weak, so I would say it's not essential. If you have money to blow and you want a good sounding synth, uh, regardless of how powerful it is and if it needs to be in your toolbox, then Silent is something that you could spend money on. But I do not deem it essential in any way, just because with Synth Master, you could do a lot of the stuff that Silent can do. Um, it's just you won't get quite as, I don't know, analog tone. It won't sound quite as there, I guess. Um, so, uh, Stereo Maker, you definitely don't need. It is a great thing to have, though. Uh, Sausage Fattener is a great thing to have as well. Volume Shaper, I would say, is something that you need. Um, because if you're going to do side chaining, you do it with a compressor. Um, you just can't shape it how you want it to, uh, to work. Because you'd have to, like, create a custom kick for your side chain so that it shapes properly. And you have to, you have to line up the compressor so it behaves exactly how you want it to behave. Whereas Volume Shaper or LFO Tool. Uh, so I could just put a slash here. Slash LFO tool um either of those are great options uh but you kind of need those for side chaining uh when i started getting it i realized you know okay this is why people use them instead of side chain compression they're just so much better um sausage fattener uh, depends on your style i'd say if you're doing electro sausage fattener is something that you should just get uh it's great for electro i haven't been using it much in this track because for this track like it's deep house slash chill you don't use sausage fattener in deep house and chill um, you use Sausage Fattener for Electro. So, um, like, whoops. Electro is going to be Sausage Fattener. Um, but yeah, Waves, the one Waves plugin I have is Max ba uh, Bass, not Bass, <laughs> uh, Max Bass. And that is, it's like, as an electronic dance music producer, you kind of need it to manage low end because you'll find that you could get very clean sub um, but when you start to get good at getting really clean sub, you'll realize that a lot of professional tracks don't rely on sub that much. What they'll do is they'll have a decent amount of sub, uh, but it's kind of like have from what you normally have. And then, um, they'll actually like use something like max, uh, bass to push it up into the higher frequencies so that it kind of like sounds like there's more sub, even though there really isn't. A reason is because if you keep a lot of good, true sub in your tracks, then small speakers won't be able to handle it. And live venues, it'll kind of overwhelm the venue and you'll just get like bass flapping around everywhere. Um, so that's why you kind of need that tool. Like you could use a dynamics tool mixed with a distortion tool mixed with some EQ to do it. But um, it's just so much more difficult and the results won't sound the same as using max ba uh, bass. So keep on almost saying bass i don't know why max bass because it's like the ah there makes me want to do the same thing so overall um i am keeping serum on here because serum is a great thing to have in your toolbox um it's, it has a very cool tone to be honest and it works for a lot of different styles uh so like synth master is analog sounding serum is digital sounding that's why you kind of want both of them um so that kind of narrows it down to 200 plus. Uh, that's going to be 350. Um, so that's going to be almost, it's going to be close to $500. Um, so, but that's like, if you pull out sausage fattener, then it's like 300 or 450 or so. Um, and that's like, that's everything you need in terms of paid stuff. Uh, sausage fattener, it's just basically a distortion and compression thing. So, it smashes your sounds. Like I could drop it on something really quick and show you. Um, I could actually just drop it on our uh, sub here in the drop. Cause this is actually where it would kind of work. Freaking.
So yeah, it basically just like smashes it. Um, it's great for Electro House. You kind of need it for Electro House, in my opinion. Uh, just because unlike using regular distortion, this like this type of distortion makes it sound fatter, which is like, I mean, as the name of the plugin entail or suggests, but um, but like if you get regular distortion and try to just distort it, you tend to get like this uh, just kind of smooth, gritty distortion instead of a fat distortion. So that's why Sausage Fattener is um, is a great tool to have for Electro because it's kind of unique. Um, uh, do you think Carnage Fattener is mandatory as well? Is that a thing? I'm, uh, I'm not sure if you're just pulling my leg or... Oh, that's funny. The card. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a carnage skin for sausage fattener. Uh, which looks like this. That's funny. Way more thumpier. Not sure what this does. Very, very way more louder. <laughs> Developed by the Chipotle gang. Oh, that's funny. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think the face is annoying. Like having a face on a plugin is annoying, but <laughs> it's not the same effect. I'm just like, from what I'm seeing, it's just a skin for sausage fattener. The carnage fattener. Mm. Oh yeah. It's just a skin. Yep. That's funny. Okay. So yeah, that's my spiel on plugins. Let me close that notepad. So yeah, these are my suggested um, what you should get. If you do electro, you need sausage fattener. Otherwise, uh, I'd say that one's up to you. So I meant to close that. Quit. Ugh. Don't save. Okay, so back into the mix here. Um, so now nice thing is we took a little break to talk about things. What we can do is step back, listen, that one change we did to the mix earlier. We'll see if it fits here. I'm going to start at this button. I have a thought. We're going to listen to this drop again. What's the vote? Should we just get rid of the vocal chops? Because, <laughs> uh, I mean, it does sound a little empty. Like, we'd have to add something else to replace it. But it's like, I don't know if I like the vocal chops.
Okay, so first of all, um, Claus says, I sound designed like three different ARPs or plucks today for your uh, for his track and ended up deleting them all. Help! Uh, okay, so two things. First of all, if it doesn't fit, who cares? I don't I don't give a crap how much time you spend on it. If it doesn't like sound good, then don't keep it. Uh, so like, don't feel bad about that. But at the same time, if you sound design them and you just didn't end up keeping them because they didn't fit with the track, save it as a preset and then like dig through it later because that could potentially be helpful. Um, uh, okay, so Joey says, I think the vocal chops can be good. Try changing the melody pattern. I don't know. See, that's the thing. I suck at vocal chops. Um, I think there's like, uh, I think there's only one time in my life I've done good vocal chops. And I could find that and show it to you guys. And it was ages ago. And it was good in my eyes from that time. Um... Mm. Uh, it's a remix though. Uh, never mind. I'm just not gonna show it because I don't wanna. I don't wanna potentially get flagged. Although I do know the. Well, I kind of know the artist. Not really. I indirectly know the artist, but. Yeah. Um. Tea time. No. Um. My tea is later. <laughs> uh. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, like, personally, I have a big problem with these vocal chops right now. Like, they could be good, but not in my hands. I think that's the issue I'm running into. Like, they could be good, but I can't make them good. Um, I could try, and I could do, like, 16 things over, but um, I just don't think I can do it. Um, like, similar to how I don't think I could do dubstep. Uh, like, if I really wanted to make a dubstep track, I probably wouldn't be able to make a good one. Uh, but, like... You know, Tropical House, I tried that. I could do it. Um, I propose I could do um, Future Bass, but I just haven't listened to enough stuff there. Um, and I said I was, whoa, what? Okay. Um, evidently, I'm on the wrong mouse preset. Whoa. Okay. So let's try to um, fix this problem that has spontaneously occurred because I accidentally pushed the wrong button on my mouse. Um but yeah, uh, like I could do future bass and I could do, uh, I could do trance. I could do, um, I could probably do, uh, like the synth pop, like what a lot of modern tracks are now. Um, but, but yeah, I just kind of feel vocal chops are not something I'm very, you know, suited for. So yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I kind of think I just should drop it because I don't think it's going to get any better. <laughs> and as it is now, it's like, it's always been like, yeah. Um, I mean. Also, I'm hearing a reverb in here that I need to pull down. Um, I think there's freaking. I need to turn down this reverb inside silence because it's uh, it's got kind of like a metallic sound to it, which is okay because it kind of accentuates the bass a little bit, but at the same time, you could tell uh, in the mix, frickin' that automation is killing me. We start to hear it right here. And that's not really good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna And that really tightens it up. Also, speaking of tightening things up, I think our kick has too much bass. So what I'm gonna do, oh, I have a limiter number six on that. That's part of the reason. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab, um, yeah, I mean like just now noticing this, but 
waves max base. So this is, um, I've showed it off this plugin before, but this is what it does basically. Let me mute myself. So I use this a little bit right here to trim that low end so it doesn't like hang out quite as much. Uh, but one of the things you also notice, if I just like pull this up to where it almost sounds the same, we'll start to, um, you'll, you'll be able to hear the difference that this plugin makes here. So it has a lot of punch, but we've kind of brought down the sub but you can kind of tell there's a little bit of conflict there. Because one of these is too loud, so we need to turn down one of them. So I'm going to turn down the sub. Man, the crossover is so weirdly sensitive. There we go. So you can tell like we're getting like this weird slap back. It's because one of them is too loud. So what I'm going to do is pull this one up, pull this one down. It still sounds big and boomy, but it doesn't sound like it has like that hanging sub anymore. So. And one of the things you'll notice now is, it, first of all, it punches a lot more. Second of all, it does like so you could you might like that like tickle that you get. I I don't know. It's like these headphones at least. Um, whenever there's a lot of sub, it kind of like starts to vibrate and tickle my ears a little. So um, if I have that off, I get that. But when I turn it on, there's just a little bit of it. It's more controlled. So that's why I I say this this plugin is like kind of like a must have for. Um, for all genres. So you could say, oh, why don't you just like EQ them? That's because this isn't really just EQing. Um, it's kind of doing something different. I think it's like doing, um, I think it like generates harmonics or something like that. Um, so I don't know, overtones, but yeah. Okay. Check my doorstep. Why? <laughs> Did you order something for me? I did order a new router, so hopefully we won't get like con disconnects and stuff quite so often. Um, okay, so yeah, that kind of cleans up the kick a bit. We'll listen through once again. Um, just make sure the kick punches in right. Save that. <laughs>
So that's what I meant by we have to like check it when it comes in to make sure it works because that one, it didn't quite work. It sounded kind of like too boomy. Okay, so I think there's, uh, listening to the percussions here, I think there's one note, like the first note that it plays, we need to kind of adjust. Because uh, it's, it's kind of been bugging me. That's better. Yeah, because it was kind of something like too close or too fast, I guess. Something like that. So, uh, <laughs> where will I post my tracks? Uh, my tracks will be posted on SoundCloud when they're done. I know the Tropical House one is not yet posted. Uh, I need to send out more e messages to people trying to get a vocalist for it. But, yeah, I still have that as a potential. It's a very slow and sad potential, though. Um... Or I might just have one of my brothers rap because apparently one of them can rap or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I kind of like it without the vocal chops. I'm just going to be honest. It sounds like a lot cleaner. It sounds a lot more deliberate. Um, but that's just my feelings. So what do you guys think? Should we like really, should we spend time like, or I shouldn't say spend. Should we burn time trying to get the vocals working? Or should we just skip it and try to go for something else? So let me know. Yeah, I kind of think we should just like leave the vocals out for now. If nothing, like if we don't remove them, just leave them out for now. Um, Cause that's kind of like, it's kind of what I'm feeling needs to be done. And then the white noise, I'm tempted to just leave out as well. Oh no, that's right, we fixed it. We fixed it so it was less present. Um, okay. Uh, not to sorry, sidetrack you too much. You said you're getting No Man's Sky, right? And I kind of wanted No Man's Sky, but then I was like, eh, it's going to cost me like 40 bucks at least. Is it, is it 40 bucks or 60 bucks? I don't know. And I have another game I'm hooked on. Like, to be honest, I might actually start doing streams in it. Um, Overwatch. I am like hooked on Overwatch. I was playing Overwatch before I started the stream. And uh, if I get any more free time today, uh, after I set up the, what do you call it? The fiber page, then I'm going to be playing Overwatch. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, No Man's Sky. Mm, it's, I think I'm going to end up passing on it just because it looks like a great idea, but um, I just don't know if I'd put time into it. So I don't want to pay like full price for it if I don't know if I'm going to spend that much time playing it. So yeah, I probably won't end up getting it. Like if I don't, if I don't get it now, I might get it later, but I don't think I'll get it now. So yeah, it's just my thoughts on that one. 
okay. Yeah, so Vardy says he votes that we get rid of the vocals. And uh, Backless Chap says we should try to keep the vocals just to, just in case they fit later. So, yeah, we'll do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, No Man's Sky is like... It was kind of like a mixed reception. There was too much hype for it. Uh, there, that's like that's the biggest issue. The fact that there was like it was expectations that it'd be the best game on earth, and it would completely smash everything. The one thing that kind of stopped me from like going completely crazy about No Man's Sky is um, there's no like construction. Like if you could build stuff, like you could build bases, and you could kind of like, you know, kind of like if they added the components of Rust into No Man's Sky, then it would simply be the best game on earth. But since it's like not very focused on that, um, I like I feel less inclined to try to pick it up because that's what, um, to me, that's what Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous are going to kind of fill up, um, because they don't have FPS yet. No, just Star Citizen does, but um, Elite Dangerous um, does not have FPS, but it is on the roadmap, uh, and I'm not sure when that'll show up, but. Uh, FPS in Elite Dangerous would be insane. Um, if they could do it, like, uh, better than Star Citizen, then pff, they just have it. So, uh, that's my thoughts. But, yeah, it is, like, see, that's that's the thing. It kind of sounds like, um, it kind of sounds like No Man's Sky is focused on exploration. And that's kind of me, kind of not me. Like, when I'm playing Minecraft, uh, for example, I'll go off and I'll go explore. And, uh, then, you know eventually come back uh like i don't spend too much time setting up elaborate bases but i like the choice to be able to do that like set up an elaborate base and not explore if i don't want to explore but that's the thing about nomad sky it's like it's 100 percent exploration like you do things so that you could explore so that you could explore more so that you could do things to be able to explore more it's kind of what it seems no man's sky is and so i don't think i'd you know i'd play i i don't think i'd get hooked that much because i like the option to be able to explore or not explore so yeah <laughs> yeah they like what they did is very good uh, i will not disagree with that they did a very good job with what they were intending for uh but at the same time you know is what they're intending for you know what i want to play I guess is the best way to ask. And do they have... Wait, 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 wait. The, It's single player? I thought it was co-op. If it's not co-op, then I'm not playing. Like, that simple. If No Man's Sky is single player, I'm not getting it. Because I, I don't give a crap. The reason I wanted to get it was because I thought it'd be a great multiplayer game. But if it's single player, I pff, no way I'm buying it. No way at all. I uh, have Elite Dangerous. My brother has Elite Dangerous. We can play Elite Dangerous if we want to explore something. That is procedurally generated as well. And granted, you cannot explore worlds, but the whole point of, like, exploring worlds, to me, is, like, there's a social reason for it. Like, you want to, like, find stuff so you could show other people, but if you if it's single player, the only way to show other people is to say, hey, come look at this. So, ugh. Yeah. Oh, okay, it is multiplayer, but the game is so big, they said good luck finding your friends. So it's basically, yeah, okay. Well then, yeah, because like, I do know the game is massive, but I was kind of hoping they'd make it, um, like have hubs to where you could kind of like, you all, you like groups start in a certain area. And like you could, you could have your friend, you could tell your friends, hey, I'm here. And then they'll go over there. That's like what Elite Dangerous is. Um, like, if you want to play with your friends, then you can. Uh, but if, like, you know, even if No Man's Sky is multiplayer, but you can't find your friends, like, you can't just say, okay, join a game with friends, or quickly locate your friends, quickly go over there, like, take maybe five minutes to get over there tops. Then eh, it's not, not, not a thing I want to do. If... That's that's like a game like that. I want to be able to play it with my friends. Actually, more notably, my siblings, because um, like right now, my siblings are all playing Overwatch. Um, so we have like a team of four people plus my roommate uh, plus maybe one other person. We might actually be getting relatively soon here, but we might actually have a full Overwatch team. So like that, that's what we like to do. We like to play games together, 
And if No Man's Sky, you can't really play it together too easily. But that's all just off topic. You kind of get it. I'm not too inclined to pick it up. But a lot of people will enjoy it. I am sure about that. It's just, I don't, like, when I play video games, it's almost always with friends. Because I don't like playing by myself all that often. Except Dark Souls. Dark Souls, I kind of like to play by myself. Except I much rather playing it with my brother and then us just swapping off between deaths. That's, like, I find that um, a lot more enjoyable than playing it by myself. So, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> uh, Arma 3 and Daisy, you have no car and have to walk like nine hours to the other city. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's not something I would. I played that for a thousand hours and let me tell you, it is impossible to play with actual friends. So my roommate says he's played it for a thousand hours and it's impossible to play with friends. So praise the sun. <laughs> Dark Souls reference. Yeah. I haven't played, um, I haven't played Dark Souls three. I'm still trying to like, I haven't played Dark Souls one in a while, but um, I'd like to work through that. So anyway, so we have this. What do you guys think we should do? We'll pop open the notes, uh, improve vocal chops. Uh, we'll put an X before this for now. X because like potentially not gonna happen proof hats percussion bar 35 maybe I would say so I kind of fixed the one thing that was bugging me about the percussions um, lethal yay that's a reminder that I still need to do reviews um, yeah I think what we might do is add another synth right here uh, to make up for the fact that we lost the vocal chops so excuse me um, time to clear some space on my desk because I need to put the mini keyboard up here. Also, I don't know. Did I tell you guys about this? I went to a guitar center and I checked out a whole bunch of MIDI controllers. And um, all the time I spent there, it was to get a digital piano for my family, which we ended up not getting a digital piano. We got a real piano. It sounds amazing because uh, digital pianos kind of stink. Um, but I spent a lot of time looking at the MIDI controllers. And I actually have a, um, a catch-all suggestion for MIDI controllers. Um, spent a lot of time messing with them. All of them feel different. The Novation Launch Key is my number one suggestion. It just feels so nice to play, and it has just as many features as the other ones. So, like, the, the keys on it, um, are so much better than, uh, all the other MIDI controllers. So, the Novation Launch Key. Weird enough, like, it doesn't have fully weighted keys like s some other great ones have, but it has, like, this mechanism inside of it that makes it feel like they're weighted keys, which is great. So... That's just a suggestion there. Yeah, Dark Souls 3 is something I want to play eventually, but I want to play through the first two because I, I like playing through games sequentially. Like Borderlands 2, everyone's like, oh, Borderlands 2 is amazing. So I'm like, okay, I'll play through Borderlands 1 first. And I did, and I loved it. So I played it like four more times. <laughs> and then I played Borderlands 2 like three times. <laughs> so when I get hooked on a game, I get hooked on a game and I don't play anything else. That's kind of how it tends to be. Um... Do we have any unused synths I could just grab here? I think this one's unused. Do we just... Yeah. <laughs> this is unused. Um, it was probably for something, but then we just kind of left it there. So, reset channel strip. Um... Ooh, you beat Dark Souls 3 with a friend in 60 hours? That's pretty good. I mean, I don't know too much, but um, I beat Borderlands twice in about 60 hours, I think. So, um, and I know Dark Souls is a lot more challenging, but a lot of people are saying, oh, the first boss is like so hard. Um, I did some gameplay recording with uh, my brother and we were just playing through Dark Souls. And the first time, I think it was the first time I battled him while we were playing, um, I, I beat the first boss there. It was, it's like a smaller boss. It's the Dungeon Keeper or something like that. So um, he's not like super hard, but I beat him the first try uh, while we were playing. Now, it took me like two or three tries when I was playing by myself. Uh, but that's because like I, you know, I had no idea how to play Dark Souls. I think it only took me two times when I was playing by myself. But yeah. Yeah, Borderlands is not too hard, but it, it's... 
you know, I was just saying, if I can play Borderlands twice, I kind of think I could probably play Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 3 in that time. Um, partially just because I've seen a whole playthrough of it. Um, but so that's, it's not really fair in that regard because I kind of somewhat know where direction you're supposed to go, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> ends up being just like a stream talking about video games. I don't mind too much. Okay. <laughs> I don't even understand how the map goes to Dark Souls. I agree. Uh, Dark Souls 3, I was like... It's actually like an environment that you kind of have to go in weird directions. It's like having, it's like playing borderlands. If you didn't have waypoints in borderlands, um, which would make it so much harder <laughs> because there's like so many different directions you could potentially go. It's like, uh, so am I supposed to go this way or yeah. Okay. So what synth should we use? What do you guys, what do you guys want here? Uh, what synth should we use? Because if we if we just choose a synth beforehand, then I'll know what tone I kind of look for and what things you kind of grab. But we have um, lethal, synth master, serum, and silent. What's the vote? Oh, we have massive. I forgot about massive. I always forget about massive. <laughs> uh, so what's the vote? What synth should we use? Come on, guys. The stupid stream lag and the fact that it's like 12 seconds behind kind of makes it a pain in the butt to make decisions like this. But whatever. We do what we can and we do what we will. We do what we can and we do what we will. Okay, so if you and your friend want to make a YouTube channel, that means it's already failed. <laughs> to be honest though, you don't like say, I want to make a channel. You just have to freaking make the channel and put something out there and keep putting stuff out there. Um, if you plan for too long, it doesn't work. That's kind of what we did with our channel. We have some stuff and some of it's actually pretty good. Um, like I think our first couple, uh, I think our first couple of plays of Dark Souls, first couple episodes of Dark Souls are pretty good. And oh my gosh, no, we played um, freaking this one game. It's a puzzle game. And oh, that was hysterical. That was great. I loved uh, love recording that. But the problem is, since we didn't like we planned for too long, we went in, recorded a whole bunch of episodes, came back, recorded a whole bunch of episodes, and then the next time we were just kind of like, um, so what are we gonna do? So the thing is, you need to just go in, start recording stuff, and keep recording stuff on a regular basis. Don't like plan and say like, okay, we'll do this, 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 and this. Cause then when you get to it, you might be like, oh, this doesn't work. You just have to go in, jump in and do it. I mean, even with this channel, like when I started this, I just recorded an episode and said, hey, if you guys like this, I'll record one more. And it took ages and people were like, man, I really wish you would have continued. And it was like a couple months and then I released another one. And then like a month later, I think I released one more. And then it was like, it became evident to me that people liked it. So then I just started releasing stuff regularly. And that's how this channel got to where it is. So, um, what's my gaming channel? Um, I'm going to keep that a little secret until we actually get something on it because it's not up yet. We have stuff recorded, uh, but it's very slowly getting edited. My brother's editing them and he has other stuff that he needs to do. So it's slow. And also we're not going to post it till we have a little bit of a backlog of content because we can't record stuff very often just because all of us have school. We all like... You know, them two live in Turlock. I live in Merced. So it's only like on weekends that that could happen. I might start doing it on Fridays. I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, the hope is when we get enough content, we'll start doing it. And then I'll just say, hey, yeah, we'll do. Well, I'm doing this now on this other channel. So. Okay. So. Um, uh, you feel like alchemy sucks for super saws, but you need to make one right now. Yeah, it kind of does. Um, it's kind of like using massive for super saws, which some people say, well, no, no, massive is great. If you think massive is terrible, it's okay. Massive is not good for super saws. That's all I have to say. Silent is the king of super saws. Um, and synth master is great. Uh, serum depends on what you want. If you want an analog super saw, you ain't getting it from s serum. If you want a digital s super saw, you get it from serum. Uh, but similarly, alchemy is kind of like massive when it comes to super size. It's just not its forte. 
alchemy is kind of supposed to sound like um almost like samples but not uh that's kind of where alchemy shines when it's you want it to kind of sound like like to be honest actually now that i think about it alchemy is very similar to massive in terms of the the kind of um area it's suited for so um Neilian production says he votes test oscillator it kind of sounds like um kind of sounds like we'll just go for that test oscillator okay um so what kind of plugin should you use for super saw um logic's best super saw plugin i believe is es2 um now retro sense does have some good sound but the problem is you cannot use like a super saw very well on it because it's just like Like it has good tone, but the problem is the fact that you can only have like two saws there. Um, so ES2, you could do some pretty good super saws with. Um, from what I've heard, I haven't been able to make very good ones, but um, actually we'll go to unison. So yeah, excuse me. Um, this kind of, oh, that's uh, mono. more release on there oh uh, we need more voices as well so um you can do it like it's not the best super saw i've ever heard but you could do some things to kind of like you know i don't know throw some distortion on there too much distortion. So yeah, uh, ES2 is probably your better bet for Super Saws. Um, now that said, it's not very good with making stereo Super Saws. You can probably tell. Like, it kind of sounds stereo, but it kind of sounds like it's just more like, kind of morphing around, kind of in front of you. Not really, like, super wide. That's the big thing that Alchemy is going to be better at, but, um, you know, this one. This one just kind of, like, the saw sound is a little bit better. So, what are saw waves? Uh, what is the super saw what are saw waves? Good question. We'll go into that. Um, so, if we go to... The analog saw initialized. That's a saw. It's a very simple waveform. So it's a bass sound that we'll have. And uh, then if we go to the square, this is a different sound. So it sounds a lot like more hollow. Um, and then we have the sine, which is super smooth. Uh, and then we have the triangle, which is kind of in between a buzzy saw and a smooth sine. So right in between there. And uh, then we have some other things. We have we could do frequency modulation, which in our case, uh, oh, I forgot. There we go. That's frequency modulation with this one. Come on. So that's like a very weird different thing. So yeah, you have your basic waveforms here that are going to be square, saw, triangle, and sine. So that's just the different sounds of them. Super saw is when you get a crap ton of saws and drop them all on top of each other. Now there's actually a super saw waveform, which is different from a saw. Um, and that was, uh, I believe it was some sort of Roland synthesizer that had it. Uh, that's actually where the sound came from. But you can kind of replicate it with a whole bunch of saws so that's super saw whole bunch of saws so that's the uh sound there um okay something about the high end in es2 deters me yeah um that's like let's go back to the so like the high end kind of sounds washed out and if we go to Go to one saw right here. Kind of 
kind of like has like this weird buzz in the high end um, that isn't regular for a super saw. It kind of sounds weird. Uh, but if you go to something, for example, like uh, Serum, that high end is so much crisper. You hear that there? And then this saw, it's like a lot more powerful. Let me turn on the volume to kind of balance it out. So the high end's a lot clearer and um, it's got a lot more power to it. And then finally you go to Silent, which will listen to the high end on this one again. And I need to go to the uh, clear. You could tell the high end is different from Silent and Serum. Like Silent sounds, uh, this one kind of sounds like a bit, I don't know, dirtier, I guess. Um, it doesn't sound washed out. It just sounds dirtier. And we go to pull off that EQ there. It's as powerful as Serum, but, um, but kind of like, kind of in the high end, it's not, it's a little warmer in the high end, I guess is the best way to say it. Whereas, we, once again, we go back to ES2 and go to tutorial settings, analog saw, initialized, just go. Like the high end just kind of sounds like kind of filtered. And then we go to uh, turn off that EQ. And it sounds like someone put like... Um, I don't know, like they didn't finish the high end. It kind of sounds like uh, it's washed out and distorted at the same time. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like pleasing. So that's, that's the one problem I have with ES2. So, uh, okay. So that said, what plugin should we do? You want to do alchemy? Something weird. Find something strange in alchemy. We don't use alchemy all that often. I have not even been through like 90% of these presets. Um, I don't know. We'll start with the at the bottom today. There's like, yeah, there's like three thousand presets. So, what are what notes are options? So pretty much everything that is a sharp or a flat looks to be an option. And then we have what are the few other ones? I think it's like Yeah, I think that's our scale there. Let's try this one. this over here so we're kind of in this area right there let's try that
I kind of like that sound. What do you guys think? It's like, it's pretty hard to hear, but... I need to shape this a bit so it's a bit more like a... Okay, so let's go, let's kind of modify this, figure out the different sounds we have here. Do we have some sort of step sequence here running? Kind of feel. Yeah, this is weird. Um, what is this step sequence they're doing? Or is it doing something? Control six, control two. Okay, so we'll go to B here. Maybe something's mapped inside of B. Oh, it's this one. Maybe? Okay, so that step... F Yeah, everything that has an orange ring around it has been automated. That's correct. Um, also, I believe... Um, yeah. I was just like hearing something and I wasn't quite sure where it was coming from because uh, I keep on forgetting that like there's stuff inside the layers as well. So... Oh, maybe it's the reverb that's causing this sound. It's like this weird phasing sound that I kind of like, but I'm not sure I'm completely cool with it. Where's that sort of sound coming from? It's not this harmonic because I turned that off. It shouldn't be this. Because it doesn't look like it's changing. Let's see. Yeah, maybe it's just that. So we'll try to get this at exactly 50. That's good. 
I'm not liking the uh, reverb though, so we'll just send it to our regular reverb that we have. I have no idea where it is. Two. Kind of feel like there should be a bit more tail in this, given the parameters that we've set. Uh, master volume. There we go. And we're gonna set the quality to ultra, just cause. We're going to adjust this so that it's not going all the way. Turn that down a little. Just get rid of that extra bite on the top end there. Because um, we don't really need that, probably. Okay, we'll take a listen to this again. Okay, we're going to get rid of some of that tail, because we don't need that. So actually, what we're going to do, never mind, we we'll, won't get rid of the tail, we'll just do this. Turn the sustain on this, uh, on the volume here. Um, see, this is the thing, the thing that confuses me. Uh, so ADS, ADSR1, right? So... Okay. Why is the sustain all the way down? This is the thing that confuses me sometimes. Um, is there something modulating these? I'll just do it here. Um, so this one, we have the volume uh, here. There we go. Alchemy, so many tabs. Yes, that is the one super annoying thing about alchemy for me. And like the fact that um, like this is just the thing that bugs me. I'm looking at the master here and I'm like, okay, so how do I turn down the sustain? It's all the way down at the bottom. Like this, like I'm, I honestly have no idea why this is happening. Um, Cause like theoretically, if you click the knob, it's supposed to show you what's like automating that. But it's not like showing me, so I have no idea. Ooh, maybe I could just. 
have it this way and then just mess with it over here. And then we'll just have this be... Uh, okay. Ah, I don't know the buttons here. Um, Because there's a way to get it right now. I want it to be plus 100%, please. Thank you. Right. Sustain, I want all the way down. This maketh no sense to me. Why is this one sharper than the other ones? I think there's like a, something based on like the key is changing the cutoff or the resonance or something. Uh, not looking like it. No, I guess it's just the the sound here, like depending on the uh And it just happens to when you turn that on. Whatever, we'll keep it. Sounds good. So now I have a couple options. I could try to record something and then key that in, which is what I might end up doing here. Or I could try to key things in manually. I probably, probably won't do that. It's just, I'm not sure. Cause like, as you can tell, I, I'm very inclined when I'm playing something back. Like I tend to follow the notes of the bass line already. So um, that's gonna be a little bit bit of a problem but hopefully we can just work through it um also uh i do want to mention i'm probably not gonna have time for track critiques today because i have a class and um i kind of need to prepare for that class but i kind of don't but i kind of do like i should but i'm probably not going to but i'll probably convince myself to do it anyway <laughs> um okay so we have this sound add a lot more reverb to it here we go. Okay, I should probably just freaking loop this for ages and uh, record. So, and then just see what we get. So, I don't know if this will work. I don't know if it actually records in takes like it does with audio, but I guess we could try this. So. Okay, 
So um, we'll try this. I need to fix a few of those notes, but obviously I need to fix all the notes. Uh, quantize to 16th note. Sure which one will sound good here. This note as well, I don't remember. Oh, what happened there?
this. Okay, so we're going to try a Vardy suggestion, which says he thinks the sound should be more of a background thing. So we'll try that. Give that a shot. See how that sounds. Whoops. Wrong. Uh, okay. And then we'll go once again. Uh, TDR Labs proximity. Okay, so I think that I think that's sounding okay. Um, now, uh, yeah, you totally should. This is um, well, I say you totally should, but it's easy to use it wrong in the sense to where you could just throw it on anything and it'll work great. Um, it, at least that's what you would perceive it as. Um, however, so this is a free plugin. So yes, by all means, grab it, but uh, be careful what you put it on. Because it's very easy to think this is just a volume fader, but it's not. It does a lot more than that. It changes the, um, uh, it changes, I think it actually, there's a potential here to where you could actually add delay on this. So uh, as it gets further away, it starts to add a delay to it because that makes sense as well. But I think that's off right now. Stereo width is what it does. Proximity, I don't know what that is. Reflections, um, I'm not sure if that's like actual reverb or whatever, but basically uh, this is a great tool to push things back in a mix. But as I said, it's very subtle in what it does, but it does it well. So if it's in the beginning, basically what I'm trying to say here is in the beginning, it's hard to tell the difference between this and volume. So um, make sure you know if your track needs to be turned down in volume or if it needs to be pushed back because uh, there are two different things. And you need to prep your sound beforehand. Like as you saw, um, I dropped an EQ before I did this because you need to make sure your sound is 
balanced correctly. So like you have it at the right volume level and at that volume level, it is EQ'd appropriately to sound like it is in the, sp the space in front of you. Um, that is the key component. You need to have it already in a space. So uh, it's the, the tone and the volume level should already be at a good spot. And then you drop this on to move it back. That's what this does. Um, it will not push something back if you have it EQ'd wrong and at the wrong volume level already. It'll just make it worse. Um, so that's the one big thing you need to know beforehand um, when you're thinking about using this plugin. Um, is my sound already balanced and already in a good spot? It's just in the wrong spot. So it needs to be, you know, like it's, if you have a lead up front, big and powerful, you can tell it's right there in your face um, and you want it pushed back, then you drop proximity on it. If something is sounding like kind of right here, but it doesn't really sound right here, it kind of sounds like it needs to be louder or more upfront or quieter or something like that, then that's not the tool for the job. Um, so you already have to have something in the appropriate space and then this will push it back. That's what this is great for. But as I said, um, it's very easy to get it mixed up with volume because you're thinking, oh, I just like, it's too close. So I need to push it back. No, you need to be able to distinguish when a track's in the right position already. And then from there, you could change its position using this. So, um, okay. So what we're gonna do here is that. And, um, <laughs> uh, have fun guy. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is listen to this again. I still don't like this like farting noise that it has at the end of it. Is there any way I could get rid of that? Oh wait, this might do it. There's some sort of detune in this as well.
sounds too obnoxious. Actually, that's a very good thought. I'm gonna try this. Okay, I uh, probably need it before the EQ. We're gonna go to Distortion, Bit Crusher. And have some fun with this. spazzing out poor logic is having a hard day apparently Okay, so I'm gonna have to stop streaming pretty soon because my computer is glitching out if you guys uh, have not been able to tell here. Unfortunately, I can't figure out what the issue is, probably. Activity monitor. It says one of the cores is completely overloaded. Uh, and that's not necessarily correct. Okay, so what's using up? Mm, OBS and Logic Pro are taking up some processing power, but that's about it. Uh, I could. Pause the playback of the stream on my end. That might help. So put volume automation on the second half of the breakdown and uh, let it gain a little till the end. The main pluck is so detuned that your new pluck won't sound too good uh, in your opinion. Okay. Okay, what we'll do is try some automation. <laughs> too much mids. Okay, so I guess what we'll do is we'll, um, uh, do we want to do automation or should I just go, uh, I don't think there's, unfortunately there's like not a way to do a noise waveform. I, I could just do this. Um, come on. No, that's not what I want. I don't want the phase. Uh, phase you zero.
So actually, what's detuned is this uh, this pluck. Yeah, the main pluck is so detuned that your new pluck won't sound too good. Um, this one is the one that's detuned. Actually, this one's the one that's detuned all the heck. So I think I mean it's a good idea, but what I might need to do is just find a different preset to replace that. Um, Cause like the note progression is kind of, it's, it's fine. Uh, but like the synth itself is not good. Uh, I think is the issue that we're running into. So um, I think what I'll do. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Claws. That's one way to do it for sure. And then if you hard pan them left and right, it can potentially give you a bigger sound. Excuse me, but it, it depends. So, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I think what we'll do... I think what we'll do is we'll just mark this down, and then I'm going to have to take off because I need to eat lunch uh, before I end up having to go to that class. So, um, also, uh, so next week I have... As I said, I may not be able to stream. Um, and then uh, after that... My classes are starting. So that means we may have a new schedule. Uh, I need to look at my classes. That's one of the things that I have completely been forgetting about. Uh, but I actually, I have classes I'm registered for, but they're not the classes I'm going to be taking. Long story short. So uh, I need to figure out what I'm going to be doing next semester. And then um, I'm going to uh, resituate the stream so it's at a decent time. Uh, first, uh so next week I might not stream, as I said. The week after that I could almost definitely stream because I have um, I have a few break days during like before school kicks in on Wednesday I think it is. So uh, I could stream during one of those days, no problem. The week after that I may not be able to stream because uh, you know you guys know the 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 usual trend. Whenever I start a semester, uh, I tend to like miss a few or delay a few streams just because I'm not 100% certain about what my lo workload is. Um, so I'll try to stream on those days, but I'm not sure. It just depends what I end up having to do. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the upcoming plan for the next couple of weeks here. So next week may or may not be a stream. It just depends. Um, so, you know, if there isn't one, I'm sorry, can't do anything about it. Um, the week after, um, I guarantee a stream the week after that, uh, may or may not be a stream. We'll see, but it's probably the case there will be a stream. But once again, that week I may have to change the schedule up as well because I may have a class at that time. So we'll see. Uh, could I do a track review in my next stream? Um, yes, I can. Uh, but as I said, um, today I'm I'm just not really going to have time for uh, track reviews because... Um, I don't want to commit to doing that because it's going to take up like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. And um, first of all, I need lunch. I'm hungry. And when I come back, uh, if it takes up that much time, then I'll have to like say, okay, guys, sorry, I have to go out to my class now. And that would be a bit of a problem because there's just like a few things I need to prep beforehand. And I'm not sure if that'll take me 10 minutes or if it'll take me two hours. So um, as I said, sorry, can't do track critiques today. Um, I'm not sure. Um, might be able to do Friday. I don't know. I might be able to do another stream Friday. Um, this Friday. I'm not sure though. Uh, so just stay tuned for that. And then once again, um, I'm going to have the Fiverr set up so that you guys can, um, I'll, I'll master your tracks for you guys. And it'll just be five bucks instead of what I was normally doing before, which is 15. So um, that's a lot more affordable. And remember, this is one thing where it's like you should not feel any shame sending your, tr uh, your track to get mastered by someone else. Um, having someone else mix it is arguably uh, an issue, um, but mastering is something that you should be sending it to other people, um, even if it's not me. Um, it's, just, it's just a way to have a second set of ears kind of like reviewing your track and doing some final changes to it. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, uh, just as long as I could hear your track. Oh, that's right, because you had, um, yeah, you had sent me a track a while ago, right? But um, you were gone for a while, and you just came back. Or not just came back, but uh, let me just double check. Or am I getting you mixed up with someone else? Uh, yeah, yeah, so um, 
you have uh, a couple of tracks. So um, yeah, I will check those out. Um, you know what? You know what I might do is I might just um, if I have what day is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Wednesday. Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. I'll probably have time tomorrow. I might actually be able to do a stream tomorrow, and then um, I could do your track critique then if you're available. So, um, yep, uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, yeah, are you available Wednesday potentially? Because I might be able to do it like normal time that I do streams. Um, sweetness, okay. So, um, yeah, I'll try to do it tomorrow. Um, the only thing I have to do tomorrow, hopefully, is study for an exam on Thursday. Uh, Thursday, I have an exam. Then Friday, uh, the only thing that would change my availability to Friday is if my family decides, hey, we're going to pick you up early today. And I'm like, okay, well, fine, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so it's tomorrow I'll try to stream again. Uh, we can do track critiques then. So get your tracks prepped up and ready. 11 o'clock Pacific time uh, tomorrow. And uh, we'll do a whole bunch of cra track critiques. Crack critiques. Uh, I need to come up with like more easy to say names for some of this stuff. Um, like TC, <laughs> just call it a TC from now on. <laughs> but then it will be one, one that's new will be like, what's a TC? Like, what is he talking about? Um, so it's just like some of those things like max base. I always want to say max bass. <laughs> um, anyway, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we'll hop in next time. I need to actually make a note down here. Uh, change synth for... Uh, wishing well, so it's not so detuned. Sweet. Uh, so that's on our list of things to do next time. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for showing up. It was fun. I'm hungry. Pizza tastes good, but I don't get pizza. You get, like, eggs or something. I mean, whatever. Eggs are good. I gotta cry myself to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time.